I've been using my current router for a little while now. It's a little bit buggy from time to time, and a company called Tenda asked if I'd like to check out their router. Why not? This is the Tenda AC1900 Smart Dual Band Gigabit Wi-Fi Router, model AC15. Looking at this thing on paper, it looks amazing with a little minor quirk here and there. I figured we'd just unbox it, set it up, take a quick look at it. Here's some specs on the side if you're curious. It has one gigabit port coming in, three gigabit LAN ports, one USB 3 port, and of course it does 600 megabits per second 802.11n on 2.4 gigahertz, and 1300 megabits per second 802.11ac on the 5 gigahertz network. I am definitely looking forward to that. Inside the box, there's another box. And inside of this box, you get all kinds of paperwork tech support information, warranty information, GPL notices. Very cool to see that. Installation guide. Of course you get your power brick. A switching adapter that's 12 volts at 2.5 amps with a pretty standard barrel connector on the end. Relatively short ethernet cable included. And finally, of course, the router itself with some plastic on it. Ooh, that's a shiny thing. That actually looks kind of like a very fancy handbag. And I can only assume Yes, this is the stand for it. But the antennas actually don't rotate beyond this angle, so you can't have them pointing straight up or anything. So you probably do best if you do sit it up and put the feet on it, but that doesn't appear to be too big of a deal. Click it into place. Yeah, pretty straightforward. So now when it's sitting up like this, you can put the antennas up and sort of direct them in a few directions. You can't put them in a huge amount of directions. You've got like 180 degree travel there. Probably best to sort of spread it out like that though. From looking at the front, it appears there's just a whole bunch of lights on here. On top, I see a reset button, a Wi-Fi button, a WPS button. Then on the back, you're gonna have where the majority of things will be happening. You have your power switch here, very clicky. You have your barrel connector, USB 3 port, and four ethernet ports. Now, as I mentioned, four. So you have one coming in, three going out. That's one of the real downsides that I've read about this. Other than that, it's supposed to be a really amazing router. It's just apparently a lot of people use a lot of wired ethernet. Mostly, lately, I've found myself using mainly laptops and tablets and phones and whatnot. So having just three ethernet ports doesn't really limit me all that much. I normally use one to two of them, so I'm good. And that is everything that came in the box. So I think next, it's actually time to hook it up, turn it on, Get it all set up. Let's do that. So I've gone ahead and plugged everything up as you can see. And if I come up here in my Mac and click on the wireless icon, you can see down here, Tenda, and I've got some information there. So I have the regular 2.4 gigahertz as well as the 5G network. I go ahead and select the 5G one. It's gonna ask for a password. Password is actually written on the back of the router and it looks like we are connected now. So in theory, if I go to tendawifi.com, and that took quite a little while to get started, I actually ended up switching over to the 2.4 gigahertz one right in the middle just because it seemed like it wasn't going to work, but it's here now. Tenda, quick setup wizard. Let's click start. It says your connection type may be static IP. It's asking for wireless settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my wireless ID just to make it easier on me so I don't have to reset every single thing that I use. And we'll hit next. And it looks like it did change it successfully. It says Candide or Candide 5G, and it looks like it automatically reconnected. That's exactly why I use the same SSID with the same password any time that I change routers. Again, took quite a little while to load up, but we're back here at the login page, and it appears to finally be coming up here. It says I've got 13 attached devices. That's a large part of the reason I'd say why it is taking so long, because everything's automatically trying to re-authenticate. Uh, and it shows that I am disconnected from the internet. So if I go ahead and click on that, and then wait a while for everything to load. As you can see, the internet settings have defaulted to static IP. It says tend to recommend static IP. I don't have a static IP here. So we're gonna say connect and cross our fingers and hope that it works. Well, it changed. It now says that it's connecting. So there's a little bit of hope there. And actually while I'm sitting here watching it do its loading thing, looking at the lights on it, it shows the 2.4 and five gigahertz lights are both blinking, which means they're sending or receiving data. The internet light is blinking, meaning data is being transmitted. Once it becomes solid, that means that it is well connected. It's not solid, it is blinking. All right, a few bits of weirdness here. I went ahead and switched over to using the IP address instead of the tendawifi.com thing. Much, much faster this way. And I had issues getting it to actually connect to the internet. But as you can see, it says connected. You can surf the internet now. If I go look at the internet settings, it says I've been connected for a minute now. It just, it kept having problems not wanting to connect. And sort of at random, it decided it was connected. So I'm not going to complain about it. Let's take a quick look at the rest of the UI though. So internet settings, of course, this is the same thing we were seeing whenever I'd click on this right here. Uh, attached devices now work. So if I click on that, you can see all of the attached devices, lots of them that just auto reattached. You've got a blacklist if you want to avoid keeping someone on your network. So I could just say, add this to the blacklist and it would not come back. You can click on the wireless settings to get info on that and to set the passwords and everything. Same thing as clicking on this Wi-Fi name and password button. You have a Wi-Fi schedule where you can turn it on and off at certain times. 
wireless repeating. So if you wanted to use this as a repeater instead of as a router, you just turn this on, channel and bandwidth. You can see here my 2.4 gigahertz network is BGN mixed. You could set it to just be in if you wanted it to be. Change the bandwidth and everything. Same thing for your AC network. You can change the bandwidth if you want it to be lower. Signal conditioning, you can, yeah. If you want to do something like that, I don't know what that means. WPS. WPS is actually a bit of a security issue on most routers, so you can turn this off if you want to. I'm going to leave it alone. You've got an option here to set up guest networks, both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, with one guest password if you want that. Smart power saving, USB stuff for file sharing, DLNA, and printers. You can set up a PPTP and a PP2P L2TP VPN servers. Advanced controls in here, such as parental controls. Very nice. So on a device by device basis, I can say, this is my desktop, for example. I can click action I can turn parental controls on and say when the internet is accessible even doing website limits so that I can say only certain websites are allowed in this looks to be a whitelist not a blacklist bandwidth control that's gonna be very handy for somebody like myself I can say certain devices have upload limits certain devices have download limits lots of controls there smart LEDs so you can keep your LEDs on all the time you can turn them off all the time or you can time them off at certain times so if you have this in your bedroom, you can keep the lights turned off if you want. And I just clicked on it, and basically the power light is the only one that's on right now. I clicked it back on, they're all back on. Tend to cloud. You can manage your router remotely using their cloud app. I'm not going to do that. Remote web. Presumably this is to allow you to manage your things remotely without needing their cloud app. DDNS. You can use DynDNS through noip or DynDNS.org. I just put all my info in there. It looks like it worked. Virtual servers. So you can say internal IPs to extranet ports. Definitely going to be setting some stuff up in here. DMZ, if you want to have something that's completely unfiltered, unblocked, you can do that. Looks like for one IP only though. Universal plug and play if you want it. And IPTV, is multicast and connect the ST. I don't know anything about this kind of stuff, but it looks like there's a way if you use the third LAN port, you can do something with IP television. And then last but not least, you have the system settings. System status, it says it's good. There's lots of info in there I'm not going to pull up. You can change your login password, you can change your LAN IP settings, which I'm probably going to do, change your WAN settings. So if you wanted to, you can change your MTU, your WAN speed, and your MAC address. You can reboot the router, upgrade the firmware, backup and restore things, reset everything to defaults, look at your system log, do auto maintenance, auto reboot enabled, it's going to reboot itself 3 to 5 a.m. I'm going to turn that off because I don't want it just randomly rebooting. And finally, time setup so you can change what time zone you're in. It did figure out that I'm in GMT minus 4, although it probably ought to be GMT minus 5 because I am in New York's time zone. But so far, very nice little web interface. Seems to be getting the job done. We'll do a quick speed test just to see if everything's working appropriately. And I'm paying for 30 megabits per second, but it's sort of the middle of the day, so it does tend to go up and down there. You saw at the beginning it jumped up to about 27 megabits a second down, so that's definitely not bad. And I get three megabits per second up, and you can see it's sticking to right around 2.5, 2.6, so that's about what you would expect. So there you go. All in all, first impressions of this. Seems very straightforward. It's got a lot of options and features built into it, and it's 82 bucks over on Amazon. I'll be continuing to use this, and if there's any issues or anything that I find, I'll be sure to let you know. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, of course, and I'll put a link to where you can find this down in the description. Thanks so much to Tenda for sending this out for me to take a look at. Thanks to you guys for watching. Leave a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to receive more when they become available, and we'll see you again next time.